Good day, everybody. What's the difference between winning and losing? What is it that causes some people to win, to be consistently successful at pretty much, well, all the things that they do? And what is it that causes most people to lose or not be successful at most of the things they do? It turns out there's about a dozen different critical factors that make up the mindset of a winner. The first thing is the mindset itself. Over the next several videos, we're going to talk a lot about mindset, but I just thought I would share a couple of things really quick to break and shatter a few myths and uh, put us all on the right track. The first thing is this. Jack Nicholas once said that he visualized every shot that he made going into the, the uh, cup uh, at the end of the shot. You know, in other words, he was going to get a great shot every single time, and of course, he was a great success. And so therefore, you and I sit there and think, I know what makes a winner. What makes a winner is visualizing it going into the cup every single time. But here's the thing. A hundred guys are golfing out there today. Every single one of them is a professional. They're the best in the world. Every single one of them visualizes. 99 of the hundred loses. One of them wins. Visualizing it going in the cup is not what makes the difference between winning and losing. It turns out when you do the research, for those people who have visualized themselves in the new job, it turns out they get the job less often than people who don't visualize at all. It turns out that when people who were going to be Olympians, people that were equal in competition, when they visualized themselves on the gold medal stand, they were the ones that never made it to the Olympics in the first place. The people who didn't, who did a different kind of a visualization, actually made it and often came in first, second, or third. They made it to the Olympics and then they went on to win. In professional sports, we know that visualization is critical to success. It's just not what everybody is, is discussing all the time, which is visualizing the end result, visualizing the win, and, 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 and defeating the other team. So what is it that they're doing? Well, they're visualizing a few things, and it'll take me a few videos to go through it with you, but the first thing that the winners consistently visualize is not the win. It's the obstacles. It's the pieces of the puzzle that no one wants to face. They visualize themselves, professionals, the Olympians, the people who are winners. They visualize the obstacles and how they're going to overcome those specific obstacles. And then they tend to go and do just that. And that's one of the big differences. Everybody visualizes the outcome. Everybody sees themselves winning the lottery. But it really has nothing to do with that visualization. What it is, where the difference is in mindset, is is it long before you get to the, the victory or the failure are all the obstacles along the way. And these obstacles all the way along the path to success or failure are the things that are going to determine success or failure. But we're so busy being out here at success or failure that everything, the people who are out here tend to fail. It's all of the obstacles in between the two and knowing what they are, solving them in your mind long before you ever get to them. That's what causes winners to win. This is why the very best chess players on planet Earth are people who have already studied thousands of games of chess. They've already seen all the middle game interactions long before they get to the end game. You can be an expert at end game. You can be an expert at the beginning game. If you can't handle the middle game, you're never going to be able to play chess. That's what makes a winner, is, is they see the obstacles that are going to happen. They solve them in their mind. They have clear pictures of them solving them, clear pictures of them overcoming them. And that is the person who ultimately is going to win. Now, there's more to it than that. And there are times when visualizing an outcome, like winning and being on the gold medal stand, can make a difference. But it's never going to make a difference unless the person has the obstacles first solved in their mind before they go out there in real life. So over the coming videos, I'm going to refine this for you. I'm going to tease out some of the really powerful, critical elements of visualization that nobody ever talks about, but everybody that is a winner already knows them. Unfortunately, there's very few winners in life. Most of the people don't. And then we're going to talk about the importance of failure. And let's call it failure. It's feedback, sure, but it's really failure. And failure is critical. And so is falling. And so is screwing up along the way and doing a poor job. And all those things matter in ways that most people never would guess. And finally, we're going to talk a lot about difficulty and how difficulty feeds into success and how it feeds into failure. Do you want to go out there and do things that are easy every day? Or do you want to go do the things that are hard? We're going to talk about all those things. So join me on the next winning video. I can't wait to see you. It's going to be fun. This is going to be a great series. Thanks for joining me.